when MBDA Deutschland quietly confirms that a missile has entered the series production preparation phase, it can sound like bureaucratic background noise. But in the world of long-range strike, those words are the difference between a capability that exists on PowerPoint and one that exists in warehouses, on flight lines, and in operational planning. On January 7, 2026, MBDA's official communication pointed to exactly that turning point. Taurus Neo has moved beyond an upgrade concept and into the industrial runway that precedes full-rate manufacturing backed by a contract signed at the end of 2025 with Germany's procurement authority, BANBW. And the strategic meaning is hard to miss. Berlin is signaling that sovereign long-range precision strike is no longer a debate topic, but a program heading toward mass domestic output. So what is actually happening here? Series production preparation is not the same as we are producing hundreds of missiles tomorrow. It is the unglamorous, expensive phase where you lock in the production design, qualify suppliers, build test equipment, establish quality assurance regimes, and turn a development pipeline into a repeatable industrial process. This is where programs either become real or quietly stall under the weight of timelines, cost growth, and supply chain fragility. The fact that this milestone is tied to a Bay AMBW contract matters because it anchors the program in procurement reality, industrialization funding, accountability, and the kind of contractual structure that manufacturers need to expand facilities and commit to long-lid components. That leads directly to the second message embedded in this announcement. Germany wants this capability under national control. Taurus Neo is positioned not merely as a better missile, but as a domestically manufactured one, with production centered at MBDA's missile integration site in Schrobenhausen, Bavaria. In today's security environment, sovereign is not a fashionable adjective, it is a risk management strategy. If your long-range strike inventory is small, your supply chain is international, and your resupply depends on political approvals across multiple capitals, you do not fully control escalation ladders, stockpile replenishment, or wartime surge. The industrial decision is therefore also a strategic decision. Reduce external veto points, secure production resilience, and ensure that the Bundeswehr's most sensitive standoff capability is not a hostage to someone else's bandwidth. Technically, Taurus Neo is being framed as a generational refresh of the original Taurus KEPD-350, an air-launched, subsonic, terrain-following cruise missile designed to reach deep targets at standoff ranges exceeding 500 kilometers. That legacy weapon was built for a world where sophisticated air defense already existed, but where the density and integration of modern systems, networked sensors, layered interceptors, and aggressive electronic warfare have since reshaped the problem. The central question for any cruise missile now is brutally simple. Can it still get through when the defender assumes you are coming, plans for you, and tries to blind your navigation? Here is where the NEO package matters. The upgraded navigation and guidance architecture, combining inertial navigation with encrypted GPS and an updated TURCOM capability, is not a marketing bullet, it is survival logic. In a contested environment, GPS is not a utility, it is a target. Jamming, spoofing and intermittent denial are baseline conditions. A missile that can continue to fly a precise, terrain-referenced profile without panicking when satellite signals degrade is a missile that still belongs in operational plans. And if you are building a weapon for the 2030S, works when GPS works is not a standard, it is a liability. Then there is survivability against integrated air defense systems. MBDA's description of enhanced electronic counter countermeasures and low observable refinements is essentially a recognition that the missile's hardest meters are not the last meters to the target, but the long transit through a defender's sensor and engagement zones. The defender's job is to detect early, classify fast, and shoot often. The attacker's job is to complicate every one of those steps, reduce detection range, degrade tracking, and force the defender to spend scarce interceptors at uncertain probabilities. A cruise missile does not need to be stealthy like a fighter to be effective. It needs to be difficult enough to find and kill that saturation, routing, and timing can overwhelm the defense's decision cycle. The NEO improvements are aimed squarely at that contest. But the most consequential shift may be software. A software-defined mission architecture sounds abstract until you consider what modern targeting actually involves. Targets move, defenses adapt, intelligence changes, and strike packages are no longer single weapons flying single routes, but coordinated salvos designed to arrive with specific sequencing, some weapons to blind sensors, others to hit command nodes, others to crater runways or penetrate hardened facilities. A missile that supports dynamic mission planning, profile updates, and easier integration across platforms is not just more flexible, it is more compatible with how NATO fights in the opening hours of high-intensity conflict. The difference between a rigid pre-planned route and a reprogrammable mission is the difference between one shot at yesterday's plan and a weapon that can remain relevant as the battlefield shifts.
the warhead discussion reinforces what kind of targets Germany is thinking about. Retaining the proven Mephisto dual-stage warhead, optimized for hardened or deeply buried structures, signals that this is not primarily a tactical battlefield missile. This is a strategic effect weapon. Command centers, protected infrastructure, high-value nodes that are deliberately built to survive. Updated fusing and refined penetration logic are exactly the kind of incremental changes that look minor until you remember the target set. Modern bunkers are engineered with layered materials, void spaces, and blast mitigation. Penetration is a science, not a slogan, and good enough is often not enough when the target is designed to defeat your first attempt. Integration is the other hinge point. The original Taurus was tied to a limited set of platforms, including Germany's Tornado and the Eurofighter Typhoon. But Germany is moving into a future where the Tornado era is ending, Typhoon remains central, and future systems, potentially including unmanned components under FCS, will demand cross-platform compatibility. Designing Taurus NEO with broader integration in mind is a way of future-proofing the investment, because what is the value of a sovereign long-range strike missile if it becomes an orphaned capability trapped on a shrinking fleet? All of this brings us to the strategic layer. Why now, and why this emphasis on scale and domestic production? Because long-range strike has become one of Europe's most visible capability gaps and one of its most politically sensitive tools. Precision standoff weapons are deterrence instruments. They allow a state to hold at risk what the adversary values most without immediately putting aircraft and pilots into the teeth of layered defenses. They also shape alliance burden sharing. A NATO Europe that can contribute meaningful deep strike capacity is a NATO Europe that is less dependent on a narrow set of suppliers and stockpiles and more credible in its own right. There is also a quieter industrial reality. If Germany wants an inventory measured in more than symbolic numbers, it needs a production base designed for sustained output, not occasional batch refurbishments. Reports and defense commentary may speculate about several hundred missiles over a decade, but the exact number matters less than the intent. Replace aging stocks, expand capacity, and maintain a production rhythm that can be surged if the strategic environment deteriorates, you do not build deterrence with a boutique production line. And then comes the political question that always follows long-range strike exports. A domestically produced Taurus NEO in principle creates the option of supplying NATO and EU partners, but in practice any export would run through strict political approvals and strategic risk assessments. This is where sovereignty cuts both ways. Germany can build the weapon at home, but every sale is a statement about escalation management, alliance politics, and the kind of strike capabilities Europe wants proliferated within its own security architecture. The real question is not can it be exported, but under what conditions would Berlin decide that exporting this specific capability increases security rather than uncertainty? So the announcement is not just a procurement update, it is a doctrine update expressed in contracts and factory expansion rather than speeches. Taurus Neo moving towards serial production is Germany preparing to own a hard truth of modern deterrence. If you want credible long-range precision strike, you need more than a design. You need an industrial ecosystem, resilient supply chains, and a weapon that can survive electronic warfare, navigate in degraded conditions, and penetrate modern defenses. And perhaps the most important question viewers should ask is the simplest one. If Europe is entering an era where range, survivability, and stockpile depth decide outcomes, how many other paper capabilities are about to face the same moment of reckoning that Taurus Neo just did?